All right, guys, how's it going? Just getting things set up here. Waiting for Facebook to catch up. Here we go. Come on, Facebook. To reconnect. Facebook's lag. <laughs> it's always laggy. Come on, Facebook. Okay, well, I guess we'll try it. Hey, what's up, Moon Mix? Glad to see you, man. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, let me uh, let me just tell the dudes. Facebook, no worky? Question mark. Hmm. Hey, what's up, me? Cinnamon. How you guys doing, man? I am back after two weeks sabbatical, whatever you want to call it. Two weeks, two weeks. All right. Uh, Kyle's working on Facebook. He's working on it. I saw Kyle in person last weekend. He's awesome. What's up, me, Barry? Plans. How you doing, man? Thanks for stopping by, guys. Um, you guys hear me okay? Back in action. Foo, foo, foo. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm back from the Zebra Summit and it was it was fantastic. I loved it. I loved it. Zebra Summit is so fun for me and for everybody else that's there. Uh, just so much great information. <laughs> it was Saint Shame withdrawal. Ah, oh, thanks so much. While I'm here, you can get your your cup filled back up for the week. All right, so we left off with this guy. Um, when I first opened him up, I realized his eyes were too large so here I'll just roll that back so you can see what it looked like I just made a few edits that's where it was when I left it last last time and I just wanted to shrink his eyes a little bit and this is where he is now so let me see I'm gonna turn this up just so I can hear it a little bit um, in case in case Kyle pings me there we go. Oh, hey, it's Facebook. Facebook's back, y'all. All right. <laughs> yeah, Moon Mix, that is, that is a new video that I haven't quite announced yet because it's still a work in progress. But if you guys want to, you can go watch it. It's a six minute video. Um, it's a work in progress, like I said. I'm trying to get it updated. I repeat myself a couple times and I need to get the uh, correct copyright information on there. Um, and then just kind of uh, exchange some images here and there, just to make sure it's good. So, thanks dude. Thanks Kyle. All right. Okay, let me hook up to uh, my chat really quick. One second, let me reconnect this. Sorry, it'll take me a second. So, um, going to the Zebra Summit Live is an interesting thing because you don't always get to see everything. Um, because I'm, <laughs> I was busy talking to people, up, getting updated, you know, uh, meeting new people for the first time. And that's what I go for. I go to socialize and network and meet new people and meet students that are there. I saw a lot of students there, which was great from, I think only a few were there last year, but uh, I think I ran into Oh, I think at least eight, if I can, if I can uh, remember correctly. So yes, thanks Moon Mix. This is a concept by Luigi Lucarelli. You can find that there. And uh, so that being said, I missed some of the live demos and talks and presentations and things like that. Um, all right, hey, what's up, Jet? Jet was there. He was at the summit. <laughs> Oh, thanks, man. So, uh, Jet was talking about my dino, my dino rider, how good it turned out, and it, it turned out really well. It was fun because uh, I, so my friend Steven Anderson, the guy who keyed it, he was there, and uh, Jake from Form Labs, he was also there, and both of them were a huge help in getting that thing together. Um, let me see, I need to find a picture of it. 
the show if you guys want to see it. Let's see here. There we go. Let me pull this down, show you guys. So, uh, Jake brought all the parts with him. Oh, come on. Why can't I grab that? It always gets, it always gets hung up on there. Okay. There we go. So, and there's Jet's comment right there. <laughs> um, so, Jet brought this in, or not Jet. Hello, Jet. So, Jake brought this in pieces to the summit in his, in his travel bags from back east. And uh, we put it together on site. But there was, a, there was a slight miscalculation. The keys were a tiny bit large, so we had to sit and sand the keys down and, to, to get it to fit properly, which was fantastic. It was fun. It was fun to just go hang out with Jake in his, in his Airbnb and then, uh, and then just sand all the keys down. Hey, what's up, Caitlin? Uh, he did not, but I can ask him. I can ask him what, what the total print time was. Now, this is printed with their brand new Pro Gray resin, the Form 2 Pro Gray resin. Um, they're, uh, oh, thanks, Indy Respawn. I'm, I always love to hear that. Thank you so much. Yay. Fun. <laughs> um, hey, what's up? Pedro's here. Okay. Yes. And my buddy Pedro, he came all the way to the Zebra Summit from S Switzerland and, uh, I got to hang out with him for the weekend. Fantastic fellow. Um, so he, he helped us sand this down and it was, it was great. Uh, anyway, this is the, this is the pro gray material. And what the Pro Gray allows us to do is print things so thin like the brim of this hat and these reins. See how thin these reins are? Typically the regular gray would get a little more brittle and it uh, tends to crack a little more. But this stuff is a little more sturdy and it's a little more flexible too. So take note, Caitlin, you might want to check that out. I know some of you guys are still waiting for the, uh, the proper bin in order to print this stuff out. The printer is behind this right here. And this, this black thing right here is the wash station. And the black one he is standing on is actually the uh, UV oven that he's standing on. And this blue base is actually printed out of what's called the, the tough material, which is super strong. They use it for um, like prototyping, like engineering and stuff like that. They'll do prototyping parts. So... Um, Jane, you went, but you don't think you saw it. It was sitting right at the, the Form Labs booth, right in that, that middle walkway. Yes, it does cost a bit more. Yep. <laughs> Matt Crap Great. Matt Cra I said crap. Matt Cap Gray in real life. Matt Crap. Uh, okay, there's... Uh, so this is the other side. You can see how, how good that pistol came out. I still need some cleanup on here. You can see some of the... The flashing and stuff in there and I need to clean it up. Thanks, Barry. Um, oh, you saw the pic? So I'll, I'll go through these really quick. So this is kind of what the ZBrush Summit looks like from on high. I'm standing up in one of the catwalks here. The entrance you come into, this is held at the Noman School in Hollywood. And you come in over here. This is a registration booth. These both are registration booths. And you can see people kind of milling around. And um, the, the Form Labs booth is over here, and there's some other vendors mixed throughout. And over here is uh, the Michelangelo uh, contest that they had going on. They had some computers set up over here. And then um, this right here, this round roofed building, this is where they do all the presentations. This is where the green screen and the stage and everything is, that's inside of this building here. And all the rest of these buildings, well, most of them are, are Nomen. And then this building you can see back here between the trees, that's actually Pixelogic. That's where they're housed in Hollywood. So that's where they live. That's their headquarters. And this is inside the, the, green, the green room, whatever you want to call it. And you can notice, thanks to our sponsors, 3D Character Workshop, it's kind of hard to see right there in the middle. There we are. Yay! Thank you, Pixelogic. So I gave away three, three seats to my course during the, the ZBrush Summit, which was fantastic. And um, this is Chris Costa. He did an... I was able to catch his presentation. His presentation was fantastic. He takes things beyond anything I've ever seen as far as realism goes. Just like super tight, detailed pores and things like that. Um, just, I would, I would, 
highly suggest finding his presentation on YouTube and giving it a look. Even if you're not into realistic characters, I'm not into realistic characters, but it was fantastic to watch. Very, very interesting. Really cool. Um, yep, and there's Lu Louis, bleh, Louis Chu Tucci. I was going to say Luigi. I've been saying Luigi today. Louis Tucci. He was the host this year rather than Paul Gabriel, and he did a fantastic job. He's always a pleasure to listen to. Uh, super cool. And this is Daryl. This is one of my students that I met. This is during the party. They uh, Saturday night, they bring in um, a bunch of beer and wine and stuff, and we just kind of hang out and chat. And uh, Daryl was there. And this is my buddy, Brendan. And Brendan is a streamer, so you can see me and him live. This is in front. They have kind of this, uh, this, this screen that you can stand in front of to take pictures. And it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to see Brendan. Hey, what's up, Brett? I was able to meet Brett there. Yep, it was, it was great to see. I wish I could talk to you more, Brett. That was fun. Um, so this is a bunch of people. I don't want to sit and go through all these people, but you can kind of hover over them. Um, yeah, there's Oscar. So Oscar is another streamer here on uh, Zebras Live. So, so is Brendan. And uh, this is my, my buddy Ronnie. And uh, I met him a couple years ago. And he is he started out as an okay sculptor, and he's become a phenomenal sculptor. His stuff is really, really good. And you can see that this is... Um, takes place in Hollywood. This is Noman School in Hollywood. So on that same catwalk that I took the picture of down into the, the main area, I just raised my camera up and took a picture of the Hollywood sign. You can see the Hollywood sign right there. Yeah, it's, this, was, this happened to be on a clear day. Most of it was kind of smoggy, full of smoke and stuff like that. that. But this was on a clear day. You can see the Broadway Hotel. Um, right where that Broadway Hotel is, that is the Hollywood Strip that runs this direction along with the mountains. That's where all the stars are, that kind of stuff. We have telephones, Brett. Ah, we, we should, yeah, we should talk more, man. <laughs> so this is the picture you were talking about with me and Michael Pavlovich. So I don't know what's going. <laughs> oh, this is Sean explaining how fast Sean uh, Mike can talk. So and you can notice I'm I have the same shirt on today that Mike has on here. This was this year's shirt at the ZBrush Summit. Um, I'm wearing last year's shirt here. Um, so this is, uh, this is Alec, Alex Alvarez. This is the starter and owner, like King Noman. So he started Noman and uh, he's a fantastic guy. Really cool. And uh, actually Blender Guru just recently posted an interview with Alex that I suggest all of you go and listen to right after my, my stream because it's really, really good. It's fantastic. He does a fantastic job giving a very nice insight of the industry and how he got to where he is. And uh, hey, Oscar, I just showed a picture of you, man. <laughs> Did you see it? Here, it's right, right there. Boom, there he is. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, so yeah, this is Michael Pavlovich. He's another streamer on here, uh, Alex. And uh, these are a couple of guys from uh, CD Projekt Red that worked on The Witcher, and now they're working on Cyberpunk. And uh, it was really cool to meet these guys. You can see the entrance to uh, Pixelogic right there. Uh, let's see. And these are two amazing guys from Sideshow Collectibles. This is Dave Igo and uh, William Harbottle. These, these guys had a panel a couple years ago. Maybe it was, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. But these guys had a really good panel um, at the Zebra Summit a couple years ago. And uh, just fantastic. They make really, really great uh, collectibles. So, and we're back to my dinosaur. I wish I would have taken more pictures. Um, it's, I get caught up in the whole mess of it all. And I'm just like, yeah, I just, I forget to take pictures. So, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, Oscar, that was fun. How, did you remember to take pictures, Oscar? I just, I never remember. <laughs> yep, this, so with Michael Pavlovich, the secret is to play his videos back at half speed. And then you'll, <laughs> a lot of people play mine at, uh, hey, what's up, Eamon? Um, so uh, a lot of people play back my videos at double speed because I kind of talk a little slower. Um, <laughs> yep, I met, I met, um, I can't, I, I think I asked you, is it Eamon or Eamon? I don't know. I'm, I, I think you said both, said like whatever. <laughs> uh, that's so fun. So it's really, really cool to meet all of my old friends there, you know, meet new people there. It's fantastic, like Eamon and Brendan and Oscar, all these guys, fantastic. 
So anyway, and Brett, yep. <laughs> I met Brett for the first time there. That was great. So should we get back to this? Ask me any questions you have about the ZBrush Summit. Um, I am, hey, I'm, and I'm gonna come out again for CTN. Are you gonna go to CTN? I'll be out there for that. Say it like Eamon, okay, <laughs> that works. Thanks, Jowies. I don't know how you, I, how you say your name, but thank you very much. Okay, um, Moon Mix, it's open right now. I was gonna close it last Sunday after the ZBrush Summit. I was gonna you know, push out a couple more emails and say, hey, I'm gonna close it, but um, you know, I, I put that video up there um, and I decided to leave it open for another week. So um, maybe another two weeks, we'll see. I, it's, it's open right now, I'm still trying to figure out, I'm still trying to decide what to do with it right now. Um, but yes, right, you can, you can sign up for the workshop right now if you, if you choose to do so. It's open, and it's open just by, um, yeah, I just, I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure out how the best way to do the whole thing is right now. So, but people are kind of trickling in, so I'm not overwhelmed. That's why I haven't closed it back up. Typically, I'll get a whole ton of students coming in, and uh, that's overwhelming for me. So I, I typically close it. But right now, people are kind of trickling in. So yeah, it's it's. Uh, if you want to sign up for it, you can you can today. It's open right now. And if you want to know more, uh, Moon Mix is posting the links. And if you're over on YouTube, YouTube cannot accept links. So. If you're on YouTube, just go type 3dcharacterworkshop.com and you'll find all the information. There's a brand new video I just posted up there. That is a work in progress. It's a six minute long video. It's, it's meant to be a promo video to kind of shed the light more on what uh, the workshop is and what it's all about. So anyway, let's get to it, you guys. <laughs> it's already been 15 minutes of yapping, catching up. I've been gone for two weeks. It's been great. Uh, Let's get back to it. Okay, with these eyebrows, I was, I was looking at this concept again, and I want to do some, some kind of chunky eyebrows, but not perfectly square like this. So I was thinking about let's duplicating it off, hiding the original one, because it's kind of experimental. Whenever something is an, ex, an experiment for you, I always suggest duplicating that subtool or saving the entire thing and saving it out as a new one if you're going to go bonkers with the experiment. Um, that way you can always go back in case you head down a path that you end up not using. So, okay. Thanks, Simon. Oh, playing it in half speed, yeah. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna push these eyebrows into the head a little bit just so they're barely inside, but I can still see them because I want to build it up outside of the head. Hey, what's up, Neil? Hey, I'm streaming, Neil. <laughs> you were asking when I'm streaming again. Now, I'm streaming again now. Ah, uh, so, all right. Cinnamon, this is... Uh, so I don't know if you watch the last stream, you'll see. Oh, hey, what's up, Brett? Um, if you watch the last one, you'll see how I how I made the actual base of the eyebrows. I essentially just drew them on the head with the topology brush, and then added thickness with the Z modeler brush. Super easy. But now that we have this, I want to add actual subdivision levels. So I'm just going to hit apply to dynamic but I can't have subdivision levels. I only want more uh, density. So every time I say density, it reminds me of Back to the Future. You are my density. I mean, my destiny. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm in a weird mood today. Missed you at the summit, Brett. Dang it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Daniel Norton, I did not, uh, I was not in the sculpt off this year. I was just a, a spectator. Okay, so now that I have that, um, I want to use Sculptress Pro mode, so I can't have subdivision levels. So I need to go to geometry and kill them. So I just hit delete lower right here. 
and they'll go bye-bye. And now you can see the resolution of the geometry is, is, is higher, but not high. So, yeah, man. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Okay, so I'm going to select my clay buildup brush. It's really, clay buildup is really nice for like big, blocky, chunky, loose hair. So I'm going to turn on Sculptus Pro Mode. So, oh, I was in the, so I was in the Sculpt Off a couple years ago. I don't know if any of you guys watch me. Um, I was in the organic side when they did flora and fauna. And my, the, the organic side was flora. And I did, um, here, I can show you guys, I think a thumbnail of it anyway. You go to 3D Character Workshop. This is my new page. If you're looking for my brushes, this is my new logo. If you're looking for my brushes, all you have to do is act like you're leaving and uh, a thing will pop up. Or you can click here to grab my free brushes, this little bar up here, and then you can fill out this information, you can get the brushes. But it's not on my main page anymore. It's like, it's called an exit pop-up. So if you try to leave, it'll go, hey, do you want my brushes? <laughs> so it'll do that. Um, and then if you wanna check out the enrollment page, you can click there. Um, if you go to Shane's story right here, uh, so you can see, this is just a little bit about me, and then um, you can see, yes, here it is, the ZBrush, ZBrush Sculpt Off in 2016. So this, this is what I did. I made this little like dandelion losing his hair because it kind of hits a little close to home for me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's like reaching for his dandelion seeds that are leaving because there's a wind blowing. And uh, this, is, this is one of the things that I did. So, <laughs> anyway. Yep, or you can go to where uh, Moon Mix just sent you to that link for the brushes. <laughs> oh, thanks, Brett. Okay. You were one of the winners in the summit. I really wish to win your workshop, but I got Keyshot Pro. Oh, you wish you could switch it, but maybe next time. Yeah, sorry, man. You know what's funny about that? One of my students actually won my course and he had to switch prizes because he actually had it already. So that was kind of funny. My students messaging me, hey, I just won your, won your course and I already have it. That was pretty hilarious. Okay, anyway, let's see. So I'm gonna grab this clay buildup, grab Sculptress Pro. I'm going to leave it in symmetry mode for, for a minute. But um, when you hold down shift and just kind of brush over the surface, it's going to tessellate it with smooth mode. And tessellate essentially just means make triangles. You know, it's just going to add some triangles. It's really not going to do anything, but make some triangles. And the smaller your brush, the smaller the triangles it will make. That's essentially how this Sculptress Pro mode works. So now what I can do with this, uh, this clay buildup brush is I can start to cut into that eyebrow and I can start to pull out. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. All right, Brett, take care, man. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, so you can build up. So I can start building up hairs and you can start cutting in like that. So that's essentially like a hair, a chunky eyebrow hair. And then I can build it up this way, this way, cut it out. And just kind of, you know, just, just try and make it look sort of organic. And I can just kind of brush all the way down here like this. You can see how it makes it look like chunky, chunky eyebrow hair. I can just kind of come along the edge and give it some in interest. Oh, he, yeah, it's too late. Sorry, he already, he already switched it out for something else. I'm not sure what he got instead, but sorry, man. Makes me feel bad, <laughs> but I'm glad you want it. That's cool. Okay, so, you know, something like that. I try and get more space between them as it comes to the center like this. Oh yeah, Keyshot Pro is fantastic. Okay, something like that. Super chunky eyebrows, done. So I'm pretty happy with those. Um, the good thing about this now 
is if I'm making a game character out of him, I can easily um, project that information into the both the color map, the ambient occlusion map, I said both, but all of these maps, and the, Z, the normal map, everything. So I can um, just push it down. And if I bring this over to something like, say, Substance Designer, I can put a different material on this, these eyebrows than on the face. So I could do like a skin material on the head and something else on the eyebrows. And then when I go to bake those down to the low resolution character map, it will bake the gloss and the, uh, that, the material information down to the main material, the actual final material. Oh, Tara, <laughs> also one of the workshop, you got the swag. The swag bag's not, not too bad, you know? There's some good prizes there. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing since I like the outcome of these eyebrows. I'm going to be, I'm gonna try to keep the consistency going along with, with the head here. Um, Caitlin, I wish there was a, there was a clear answer, uh, but mostly CPU. That's like the biggest thing. Memory, everybody's like, I'm gonna jack up the memory, um, but memory only really comes into play when it comes to rendering and other 3D programs. But for ZBrush, it's more about the CPU and less about the memory. Um, and graphics card, yes, it will, it will very much help. But uh, like, I think I haven't, I haven't had any slowdowns since I've got this new machine. I'm running two, it's, it's incredible overkill, but two uh, 1080Ps, which is nuts. I should only have one. It's really ridiculous. Um, but I, I haven't had any slowdowns. I, I'm pretty sure the CPU is the number one thing, even over graphics cards. So, oh, nice, Mike. <laughs> Mike, was it you or was it Sean that won the course? I think it was Sean, right? Hey, Javier. Trying to watch this while at work. Probably have to watch it later on YouTube. No worries. Thanks for dropping by if you, if you can't stay. Okay, I'm going to make his... Uh, I'm going to make his mustache really quick one thing you can do too it, with with things like this is um you know i keep going back and forth I, i'll go to the head and draw something on the surface and then i'll go delete that head out, you know because i duplicate it there's another way to do it too that i don't talk about very much during my streams but you'll see i have my eyebrows active um, but i can also draw topology here even, you know, I, I don't have to be drawing on, how can I put this? I don't have to have the head active that I'm drawing on. I just have to have it visible. So I can draw on the surface of this head, even though I'm on the eyebrow subtool. And since I want this, this mustache to be kind of part of the eyebrow subtool, I can make it part of this. But there's other things that you don't want to, well, there's other things that you may want to do that you might not want the other to have the eyebrows in there with this. Like, for example, extrude. I, I, it might not work if, if there's eyebrows in there. Like, panel loops wouldn't work. I'd have to hide these or I'd have to separate them into their own subtool, something like that. Um, let's see. Did you ever try to check with how many millions of polys your machine? I have not tried that, Pedro. I should, huh? <laughs> I don't, I haven't, I haven't pushed it that high. Yep, CPU is, a fast memory is good, but you only need, need it for large projects. Totally true. So DDD Studios, that's, that's totally correct. Hey, hey, hey over on Facebook, how's it going? Okay, let's get this mustachio going. And I'm just going to do something super simple. You know, I might take it all the way across, actually, just... Just so I have it underneath there. Uh, there we go. Something like that. We'll see if there it goes. Boink, boink, boink. See now if I click on here, it should just add the yep the thickness. If I undo that, see it makes the new object whatever color you currently have. And since I have white, it made a white mustache, but. I want it the same color as the eyebrows, so I'm gonna eye pick this color off the eyebrows, and how I do that is just hover over and hit the letter C on my keyboard. And now you can see that it just selected that dark brown. Now when I click on the surface, it's gonna make a dark brown mustache. 
And yes, I could fill it after the fact, but I'm just saying if you, um, sorry, I'm starting to laugh because this guy's got a little, <laughs> little mustache like that dude on Family Feud. <laughs> anyway, um, there, yeah, it's just, uh, it'll, it'll fill it with the color that you have going on. Yep, so many cores. I have, I'm trying to remember how many cores I have. I think I have 12, 12? Eight or twelve? I have a reason. That's R Y S E N seventeen hundred. I I forget how many cores. You want to get as many cores as possible if you're doing ZBrush. Okay, so I'm going to split this because I do want to do some things to this mustache that I don't want to affect the the eye, eyebrows. Okay, so oh, thanks, Oscar. Okay, so now. I'm just going to, uh, this is still masked off. So what I can do is I just hit split and unmask points. And for those of you that are new, that are watching me for the first time, this is my custom user interface. And this menu right here is my custom menu that I've made because I hate uh, diving down into this tool menu over and over and over again. So I've created a custom menu that is, I just hit the two on my keyboard or I have mapped it to the back button on my on my pen, so it will pop up anywhere underneath my pen. So it allows for really fast, easy access. And I give away this user interface for free over on my website. So if you go over to 3dcharacterworkshop.com, there's a little bar across the top that just says, get my free brushes. Or just try to leave the page and it'll say, hey, are you sure you don't want my brushes? Yeah, one of those annoying pop-up things. So um, anyway, it's right there. Or Moon Mix is posting links. Thank you very much, man. Okay, so now let's split this off. So I just go to uh, split unmask points. And now it made a new sub tool. You can see there's the eyebrows and here's the mustache. Okay, and what I wanna do is divide this up a couple times. Let me turn on, oh, I don't want to divide that. Now, after you split something like that, a really easy hotkey, a way to get down to the new subtool is just to hit your down arrow, and that will select the thing that you just broke off. So if I do up arrow, it's gonna select those, uh, those eyebrows, and then if I hit the down arrow, it just selects the mustache. So, let's see. And how you set the hotkey to, uh, to, to my menu, a lot of people get tripped up on it. All you have to do, it's really, really easy, you can see this 3D CW, that's 3D Character Workshop menu up here on the top left. All you have to do is hold down Control and Alt, click on that menu, and then push the number two on your keyboard and it'll, it'll assign it to that, that hotkey or whatever hotkey you want, it doesn't matter. Then you go into your Wacom properties and set up your back button to call the number two on your keyboard and there you have it. It'll just pop up every single time. Okay. Uh, let's see, Scrawl over on YouTube asks, for a stylized character for a video game, would you recommend doing the low poly first or start with the high poly and build the low poly around it? So that's a great question. There's actually uh, two answers. The first answer is, personally, I always build the high resolution character first, just like this, and then I will retopologize it near the end. And the second way to do it, if you are already working on, um, on a project or you're at a studio working on a game, with uh, a bunch of other people, sometimes they will come up with what's called a base mesh. And that base mesh has, uh, has a point array. It's already like the, the points each have a number, like inside of Maya or something like that. They each have a number. It's called a, oh, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> it's like a vert count or something like that. Anyway, what it does is if you use that base mesh and you try and fit it, to all of the characters. Say there's a bunch of human characters in your game. Say you're making Call of Duty or something like that. I guess that's not stylized games, but just for example, you know, some, some kind of a game that uses a lot of human characters, not monsters, not animals, just something where you can use the same base, base mesh over and over. Yeah, vert order, thank you, Tim Man. Um, so the, uh, basically what it does is it, it saves the rigging department tons and tons of time if you can just Use the same base mesh and push it around and try and match the next character and match the next character. 
that's something that is is done in both film television and games i said both again when it's three things <laughs> so um anyway it's used all over the place the only place you don't need to retopologize something is if you're using your character for illustration or 3d print both of those you don't really need to do any retopology unless you want to keep your characters nice and clean that way so there's a lot of people that do anyway so okay let's subdivide this guy down i need to remove or add the creases i'm actually going to add them so when you when you extrude something like this it'll automatically crease it it'll crease it down the middle and it'll crease put creases around the the edges like this whoops i didn't mean to do that so what i just did there what i was trying to do is sometimes when you when you rotate your camera around like this sometimes your 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 object will just swing right out of view and you're just like where did my object go and what you can do is you can hit f on your keyboard which will frame it that's f is for frame it'll frame it in here but it, then if you try to rotate the camera again or, or orbit the camera your object will swing out in space again so something i like to do to center the camera is i'll just hold down shift uh, that's for smooth and I'll just barely tap on the surface and what that does is that resets the camera pivot point so now I can rotate around the last spot that I touched you see I touched this vertice right here and you can you can spin right here so that's that's kind of a little trick um, now I want to crease all of the edges that that are past a 90 degree angle and you can see on this back edge this is part of the same poly group that's on the top and the bottom. So if I hit crease, it's not gonna do anything. I can crease this one of two ways. I can either go into the Z modeler brush, hover over this edge, hold down space bar, hit crease edge, and then tap on that edge. That's probably the fastest way for this. Um, and then if I don't want a creased edge, I just hold down alt and tap on that edge and it's not creased anymore. So, um, and what creasing does is it just maintains that edge when I subdivide like this. I just, I just hit dynamic subdivisions. It's right here on my user interface. And dynamic subdivisions is just a preview of your subdivisions. It's not actual subdivisions. Okay, so, but another way you can do this to uh, assign creasing really quickly if you have an object like this is you can hit, uh, let's see, group by normals. If I click on this, group by normals, it's going to put a group on anything past 45 degrees because my degree tolerance my maximum angle tolerance right here is set to 45 so anything beyond 45 it's going to put into its own group now what I can do is I can hit this crease poly groups border and what that's going to do is that's going to put a crease around everything but it's not going to get rid of any creases that you already have like this one so I'll show you one more time I'm going to uncrease all this is what it looks like when nothing is creased at all. Then if I hit crease by polygroup, now it's going to crease everything like that. And it's going to give me this, you know, nicely creased thing like this. Okay, but there's one more thing um, that I've, I've taught before in my streams, and that's the creasing level. And that's right here, this crease level. So I'm actually going to, you can't do it after the fact. You can't do it after you've creased. You have to do it before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uncrease all. I'm going to change this crease level to two. So what that does is that's going to hold the crease level for two subdivisions and then let it go. If that makes any sense at all. It's kind of weird, I know. So crease polygroups. Then when I hit, I'm going to turn this dynamic off. And then I'm going to divide it once for real. Divide it twice. And then by the third time, this is the third time, you can see that the crease has been it's let go a bit. So it's kind of starting to get softer. And then if I subdivide one more time, it's even softer. So it doesn't have this really super crisp edge on there. It's kind of soft. So that's kind of the procedure I like to do whenever I'm making something like, like a mustache or eyebrows or something like that. Okay. So let's see. Do you do the retop for production in ZBrush or do you prefer to do it? I do, I use external and it, honestly, it doesn't matter where you do your retopology. It, it just matters that you are comfortable with wherever you're doing it. Um, like on the last project, I used, uh, I used Maya. Their new quad draw is fantastic. 
So there's there's quad draw. There's it's all over. There I think almost every single 3D program out there has retopology of some kind. So it's just wherever you feel most comfortable doing it. And then you can just bring it back in here as as uh, an OBJ, you know, and then just append it. And you can either make it well. It depends on what you're doing, but you can either make your mesh, um, you know. You can make it as the new low resolution of your high resolution mesh. I haven't gotten into that, but you can actually bring in an object as your low and then divide it back and project that high resolution detail back onto your new reto newly retopologized model. Anyway, I'll, I might have to get into that um, during one of my streams sometime. Okay, so now that we have this and it's subdivided, we're going to get rid of lower because we're going to turn on our Sculptress Pro mode and do the same thing that we did with the eyebrows. Man, I'm yapping a lot today. Hope you guys don't mind. <laughs> and then I just kind of, I'm using Alt and I'm just cutting it down into the surface. Let me catch up for any character. I usually build a model of some primitive models for the general shape, then Dynamesh. Yep, that's, that, that's pretty much my workflow, Phil. That's what I teach in my 3D character workshop. Something similar. Gonna... We're trying to be random. That's, that's the hardest thing for me. Be random. Because <laughs> humans, just their tendency, they just want to be... You know, perfect, to, to, to perfect with straight edges. And I shouldn't have dynamic on this. Did I? I think I accidentally clicked on a different sub tool. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, yes, that was a great time. It was fun hanging out with you, Pedro. Glad you made it home safe. Uh, so somebody asked, can you use surface noise for this, for this hair stuff? Uh, probably not. I mean, maybe, but I wouldn't, that wouldn't be my first choice. Just because this is so hand sculpted, you know, I wouldn't, I don't know. Noise is very procedural, so it'd be kind of difficult to uh, figure out. So I'm gonna turn off symmetry for a second and then I'm gonna do some asymmetry action going on here. It's not so symmetrical, perfect. Knock some of these off and All right, something like that, maybe. Okay. Then, I'm gonna do the hair the same, well, a similar way. I'm gonna look at this head geometry. Okay. This is how we're gonna do the head. The hair, I should say the hair, not the head. So, we have some thin hair going around the back of his head right here. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this. Then turn off Sculptress mode. With Symmetry on, I'm just gonna come in here. Let's get a different brush. I don't know why this is going so slow. Maybe because I have two heads showing. There we go. Okay, I just turned off uh, dynamic subdivisions. Just it seemed to be slowing it down. And I'm just gonna mask out wherever I kinda want the hair to go. Okay, so in here, hey Antonio, oh somebody was saying, I missed, I missed the text, what do you, da, 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 da. Oh, 
let's see. Somebody said, oh, I'm glad. Sorry, if I missed, if I missed your uh, comment, please comment again. This, sometimes it goes so far. You just signed up for my awesome workshop. Even the first lessons are great. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to sign in again. Oh, I, have, I just got an email from Pixelogic from you. So they forwarded it to me. Hope I didn't put the wrong email address. I'll look. So after this stream, I'll, I'll take a look and I'll send you an email. Okay? Sorry you're having troubles. It's really easy to find you and, and I can send you maybe the password you used and all that kind of stuff. So we'll get you back in. And thank you very much. Glad to have you in there. Okay, and it's always like, I don't know how far down the hair goes down the neck. I just kind of guess. You want to be careful you don't get masking on the ears. If, if you do, it's not the end of the world. Get a smaller brush and go in there. Okay. Now, this is the trick. All I do, he looks like a bald guy like me. All you do is hit um, edge loop mask border. And what that does is it puts an edge loop around everything that I have masked, right? So now we have this. Um, are you using the new mask plugin? I don't, I don't think so. Are you talking about the one they, they talked about at the ZBrush Summit? Then what I'm going to do is polish by features just to straighten up those edges. And I, I don't care about the rest because I'm going to delete it. I just care about the hair edge. Okay, so I'm going to do that one more time. Polish by features. And it's just kind of tightening up this, this edge border. Now I can delete it. Oh, looks, see, it looks like I got some pieces of the ear and some little thing down here. So let's clean that up. I'm going to solo this so we can just see it. Okay, what we can do now is hit uh, Delete Hidden, then Auto Groups, and that's going to put these little, these little extra bits in their own group. We'll hide them, then hit Delete by Hidden. And... I can kind of get this on an angle where I can see it. Change over to select lasso. And then I'm going to hide this portion. I want that piece. And then if you hit control W on anything that's solo like this, you can put it in its own uh, poly group. Okay. Then I can hide everything and then just hit delete hidden. Okay. Now I'm just going to, uh, it's really easy to retopologize this. And you want to go really, really low, like about a two or something like that, or a one. Let's see. Something like this. So very, very low. Now what? Now this is my hair helmet, as it were. And what I can do is just add some thickness with the Z Modeler brush. So I can just hover over this. I already have extrude poly group all selected. And then I can just kind of pull it out like this. Unsolo that head so I can see it. And he totally looks like a bald guy right now. Control, yes, Control plus W, that's a, that's a really, really nice uh, hotkey because it will, it will put anything that you have masked, like this, if I mask this area, hit Control W, it's going to put anything in the mask and make it a polygroup, but it will not outline it. That's why edge loop mask border is better than this because this will just put whatever you have masked in a polygroup. Um, it will also, if say... I want this outer shell, this orange outer shell right here. If I want it to be a different color for some reason, I can just isolate this by doing Control plus Shift and clicking on a vertice. It will isolate that shell. Then I can just hit Control W several times until I get the color that I want. Not the polygroup color makes a difference, but I'm just saying if it's... Because sometimes there's polygroups, it'll, it'll do like a green and a very slightly different green. You know, and you're like, I can't tell if that's a polygroup. Just isolate it and hit Control W a couple times and you can make it a different color. Yeah. Uh, for, okay, what is the key combo for a red selection again? Okay, so 
it's tricky. It's like Twister. It's like playing Twister with your fingers, right? So Control plus Shift will make a green circle if you're, if you're on this select lasso, okay? It'll make a green shape, whatever color you make. And if you want to move that shape, you just, this is where the twister part comes in. If you're still holding down control plus shift, add the space bar, and now you can move it around like this, okay? And then one more, this is like left foot on blue, you know, you, uh, I'm going to put my, so let's see, <laughs> my ring finger is on control, my middle finger is on shift, my thumb is on the space bar. Now if I hit alt with my finger, Hold on a second. Okay, sorry, you can't you can't hit Alt when you're when you're hitting the space bar. Okay, so after this is done, I'm holding Control plus Shift. If I hit Alt at the same time, it goes into negative. Okay, and then if I want to move this shape, then I can hold the space bar and move it around. And then if I let go, it's going to hide anything inside that section. So green will um, hide everything else and red will hide everything in that area, if that makes sense. So there you go. Okay, let's get back to fixing this bald dude's hair. Um, we're going to, I'm gonna turn off symmetry and I'm gonna hit this little Google Maps icon. So it centers this gizmo in the middle. And then I wanna scale this down so this hair gets embedded in the head. <laughs> you could not remember how to do it. Yeah, it's in my course. I have hotkeys underneath the videos so you can kind of take notes and write them down and remember them. Because once you get once you get that down, that's kind of a core skill. Once you get the muscle memory in your hand as far as like, you know, all these core skills like hiding and showing and masking and all that kind of stuff and these hotkeys in your muscle memory, then it goes really, really fast. Like, I don't even think about it now, so. <laughs> Do, yeah, th that's the worst one. The worst one is, is this one, is the red plus space bar, because you're essentially holding down four keys at once, which is a little ridiculous. But, you know, it's, it's like ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it's like a scale. You just keep... That's, that's the worst one. Typically, you're only holding down two or less, two or one or none. Okay, so I'm going to try something. And since I'm going to try it, I'm going to obviously duplicate my subtool and hide the original because I want to tessellate, tessimate. I swear that's a word, made up word. But I'm going to turn uh, symmetry back on and I want to tessimate this. So I'm going to hit that. Okay, it's two too high. I'm going to turn the polygon size down. Okay, that's too low. There we go. Something like that. Basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give myself a surface that I can sculpt on. Okay. Yep, you can do it. Yep, once you once you get that muscle memory, it's it's pretty easy. Unless you're going back and forth between like a program like Maya or something. Then Maya does everything completely differently. And then I've gotten to a point where I'm okay. I can still move around in both programs. But man, it was tough there for a while. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so let's turn on Sculptor's Pro Mode. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Except for I'm going to turn my intensity up higher. I can also grab this detail brush, which is essentially the Damien standard brush that's been tweaked a little bit. And I can cut in these, these lines like this. Here, let me turn this off so you can see. But this is actually what Sculptress Pro Mode is doing. It's adding all of this geometry inside there to, to allow me to add this cut. And the smaller the brush I make, the, sm the smaller the details of the triangles get around that area. And I can also come in here with Shift and sweep it across to make a whole bunch of little triangles and to kind of get the surface prepared before I sculpt on it if that makes sense. It's like, it's, I don't know, it's like, it's like adding gesso to your canvas if you're a painter to get it ready to be painted on. <laughs> if, kind of think about it like that. Okay, so now that I've done that, now I can also turn up the intensity of this and just cut into that thing. I just wanna kinda make, make these cuts around this edge to make it look like the hair is growing out of the head right there.
<laughs> Oscar, I don't know about that, but thank you very much. I have fun with it. And again, it's, it's super hard for me to be random. Be random. I can't. Like when I was, some of, the, some of the jobs I've been working on, it's like, it's, you're too, you're too predictable. <laughs> so it's really hard for me to be random. I built these two up really high. So you can just grab the move brush and push them back down or try and smooth them. Also, uh, if you want to break stuff down, what you can do is increase the size of your smooth brush, or your brush in general, but, and then hold down smooth, and it'll make larger triangles, which will break down the, the objects or the, the surface. So you can kind of cut it down, build it up, cut it down, that kind of thing. Come in here. Okay, something like that. Um, and you want more detail towards the front of your face because that's where your eye is going to be drawn. And as you go back, you can kind of get rid of a lot of that detail when it goes. So, yeah, I, Ty, I used, to, uh, I used to use fiber mesh all the time. The problem is it doesn't transfer to a game mesh very well because you have a whole bunch of fibers, right? So then you have to figure out how am I going to get these fibers into a game engine or how am I going to get these fibers 3D printed. They look really nice in an illustration, but if you're going to take them anywhere else, it's, it, it starts to become an issue. Unless you're going to be going to film where you have some kind of hair solution where you can use the curves that way. Um, but typically that's why I, I just kind of moved away from them. Okay. Now what I want to try and do is use this clay buildup to just kind of add some more, some more surface interest to make it just look like his hair is being combed back to, this, to the back center. Oh yeah, control button, <laughs> for sure. Okay, you can go big with your brush to start with. And then you can turn off symmetry uh, by hitting X. And then you can just kind of go across the middle so it doesn't look, it's like weaving a basket, you know? <laughs> and then just kind of smooth it all down. And this just gets really rough and lumpy. I, I don't know if I really want to keep that. It's just okay. Um, I, I, I tend to like smooth better so I think I'm going to undo it back till this point because I just like simple is better in my opinion. So I'll just smooth that out. That looks better to me than all that mess happening. There we go. Okay. Let's, let's add, I'm just going to start adding these, uh, these little dreads and stuff up here. And I'm just going to add it to this hair subtool. And then we'll refine this upper edge after I get those dreads in place. So that way it will, and I don't even know if these are dreads, it's just kind of clumpy little thing going on there. Um, but I can just grab my appendage brush and just start drawing these things in. Let's see. Hey, what's up, Steven? I was talking about your keying earlier and we were, I was showing it off a little bit. Well, I was showing the final sculpt Thanks for doing that. So Smartest helped me uh, key that, that dragon dinosaur thing for the summit. So just want to call you out. Really cool, man. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to use Sculptus Pro on this too. And I'm going to make them a bit larger than these. So I can duplicate the heck out of them. Okay. Oops, I'm gonna bring it over to this side and then do a mirror weld. 
turn on symmetry. There we go. So let's see. Hosam says, hey Shane, I'm a big fan of your work. Thank you so much. I have a question when I do cartoon characters like you doing it now. Going detail, I draw every muscle. Can't simple things like you do. Um, so my secret, my secret is keeping things simple. Absolutely simple. You, have, you, you don't need to go and do every single muscle. Um, I block out my characters using primitive shapes. That's how I teach how to do things in my 3D character workshop if you're interested in taking that. But you can watch some of my previous streams. Every single character that I start out with, I start with very primitive objects and keep things super simple for as long as I can. Yeah, this is horrible. I need to, I need to populate this quickly before it looks like something that's not good <laughs> too late <laughs> here maybe if we make them this not colored <laughs> it'll be better for a minute i'm going to cross the center thanks moon mix Chocolate eclairs. Exactly. <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, you guys are making me flush. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to go to this angle and just try and populate. Make some larger. Yeah, I'm going to get in there and we'll, we'll groom this in a minute. <laughs> but just bear with me for now. Please. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. You got to start somewhere. You know, <laughs> the worst. Okay, the worst was when I was at CTN. I was in front of everybody giving a presentation. I was making a giraffe and I, I made his nose and then that long part of his snout and then his head. And it was like crazy phallic looking. <laughs> and I was on a mat, Macintosh and I couldn't remember the hotkeys. And I was trying my hardest, I'm like, no, no, no. It's like these big screens above me and it looks like I'm just sculpting dingles. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was great. Great, good times. So I'm, tr I'm, tr I'm trying to avoid that kind of stuff, but sometimes it just happens like this. You just gotta have faith that it's gonna turn out. <laughs> What's up, Sean? me this looks like a, a, a carpet that's been zoomed in <laughs> like on a microscope not a microscope it's not that not that small oh man it was the worst I was sweating let's see uh, how do you keep the pieces from being negative negatively affected by the symmetry you know it's it, it's actually better now uh steven like i can i can put it here and let go and move it and it's not it doesn't do like it used to it used to when you let go it would like cross and stretch and i don't know what kind of code they did to make it not do that as much but as long as you don't you know as long as you like don't go back in like i'll work somewhere else and then come back then it will probably stretch but as long as i'm 
just dealing with those pieces like right now it won't do that weird stretchy thing that I think you're talking about okay so <laughs> yeah no giraffe no <laughs> So what do you mean, are they the same polygons? I'm just duplicating. Uh, I'm duplicating this, this object over and over. All I'm doing, as long as it doesn't have subdivision levels, whatever is not masked, so like this individual piece, this is the only one that's not masked, what I can do is just hold down control, grab this move, and these corners are a world space move, they're not local move. Let's see, um, let's see, there's another Facebook question. Uh, hey man, I've probably some question maybe you get a lot, but to inset another tool you have, to insert another tool you have, I mean, if I got some hair in this character A and I got another tool character B, how can I insert the sub tool, just the hair? Okay, so yeah, to do that, if you wanna bring in an object from a different character, all you have to do is load that character's tool and you just do it right here. You can't have it as a project. You have to have it as a tool because you know, keep your characters saved as tools, not projects. And then you, you can load a tool right here. Um, let's say like, like, let's say my blue man from, from a few streams ago and you can load him in here. So here he is, right? Um, and what you do is you select the tool that you want to bring over. Say I want to bring over his hair, right? So I click his hair right here, and then you'll see it show up in the preview of the tool right up here, see that? Then if I click back on the guy that I was working on, then I can kind of go down to where I want to place that hair in my ordered list, okay? My subtool list, and I'll go one above it. So it's gonna place it one below. And if I hit insert, and I click here, you can see there's the hair of the, of the blue guy. So then I click this, and now you can see it's added that guy's hair in here. So you can only do that one subtool at a time. So if you have a character that has a ton of subtools and you wanna bring that character in with this character, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. So the best thing, the best thing you could do at that point is um, merge your subtools together, then bring it over, or merge groups of them together and then bring it over. But that's kind of the only way to bring multiple objects or you know into each other's tool. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, so I'm going to delete that now. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> a group of blue men. <laughs> what would I call them? Okay. So now I lost my, I lost my, my uh, unmasked one. So this guy's looking old with this gray hair. Okay, yeah, maybe it'll be easier with folders. We'll see. I'm not putting, I'm not putting too much faith in the introduction of the folders, but once they get into place, oh, the things you can do. That's kind of the Dr. Seuss, right? Oh, the things you can do with folders. Once they get them in there, I think they'll take them to uh, nice places. But when they first implement them, I think they're just gonna try to get them in there just to have them. Okay, so all of these, oh, I do, I do still have it. Okay, great. <laughs> we got, do I yell? <laughs> we got folders. I yelled that at the ZBrush Summit because <laughs> I was so excited. If you, if you listen to their presentation, you hear somebody go, we got folders. That's me. That's me shouting like an imbecile, imbecile. <laughs> Thanks, Pedro, for bringing that up. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's see. Do <laughs> Steven, you asked a question and then you left. You're going to have to watch it back. <laughs> yes, I did talk about the symmetry thing. <laughs> Hey, what about symmetry? See you later. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you, man. <laughs> oh, right, yep, folders. Folders are so cool. Okay, this guy has a really straight... No worries, man. What I was, what I was gonna say, or what I was saying is, as long as you don't let go, 
you can cross you can cross symmetry like this see that and if you if you let go and then you grab it again and move it whoops i actually duplicated it make me to duplicate it if you let go whoa it made a whole bunch gosh stop it okay i think i broke it <laughs> it's doing that it's doing that duplicate thing okay what in the world okay okay now it's not doing it all right all right all right uh so you can cross the middle let go and pull it back apart okay so you can do that but if you if you leave those objects and come back there's a good chance that it's actually going to like get collected in there and like not come apart. I, but I think they've done something to the code so it doesn't mess with it as much, if that makes sense. So why not export each subtool and then import them back into Subtool Master? You can, that's, I mean, you could do that too. There's so many different ways of doing it. That's if you're bringing an entire character in. Um, I think his main question was how do you import an object from a different character into the current character you're working on. I wouldn't go to the hassle of bringing in a whole bunch of, I wouldn't go to the hassle of exporting a subtool and bringing it back in. Um, also, if you export an OBJ, that gets rid of all your subdivision levels or anything else like layers or anything. If you append it or insert it, like I showed you, that it will keep some of that information. Um, so if you have uh, an object with subdivisions, it'll keep it. <laughs> yep, go go brush. Go brush, Nemo. Okay, here we go. We are going to um, put these in auto groups. How about now? <laughs> it's rainbow. And then, let's see. So this is going to be tricky. Sorry if I bumped this. This is going to be tricky, but because uh, if I was, I want to mirror and weld this so all of the same geometry is on both sides i th i think i'm trying to think through it right now while i'm live streaming because what i could do i could do one of two things i could pull half of the hairs out away from the center do a mirror and weld and then push them all back together i could do it that way but i want asymmetry so what i think i'm going to do is just leave them all in their own groups and just start working them asymmetrically and just start just start going to town so Okay, let's see. I usually catch your videos of your stream on YouTube after the fact, but I'm reali realizing I can catch you live on my lunch break. Yay! Yes. Thank you and welcome. Okay, so when I'm editing hairs, hairs, even though these are big, uh, big clumpy, whatever you want to call them, um, what I'll do is I'll usually use the Move Elastic Brush because move elastic will allow me to move these hairs in a larger way rather than the regular move brush just kind of lets you move just the general area but uh, let me save this guy out okay and i'll show you i'll show you what i'm talking about see this see how it's kind of elasticy very like woo woo I'm going to turn off symmetry and I'm going to turn on topological. And you can see that I can move these pieces very, very easily. And it'll move almost the whole thing at once. Almost. It has a fall off, but nothing like move. Then I can just kind of pack these guys down the center and just kind of go back and forth. So I can. I can mess with that asymmetry and get it going and fix it. Just kind of move and fill in these little gaps. Okay, and then what I can do is start working the randomization across the top. Yeah, those the the new UV peel is like yay. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to to play with it, especially the ability to um, to straighten UVs, because on my one of my last projects, I had to straighten the UVs a lot. So I'm anxious to see how well that works. Let's see, 
in my head, I'm just like, be random. Got to be random. Trying to be the most random guy right now. Yeah, so with this guy, I know I'm not going to want to, um, I'm not going to want to retopologize all the way down into these little hairs, okay? So what you can do, yeah, you can, you can turn on topological on any brush. You can make any brush be a topological brush, okay? What I'm going to do with this, I'm going to put this hair shell in its own subtool. So we'll split hidden. We'll go down. Now we just have this garden of hairs here. But you can see there's still, if you look down in here, there's still a bunch of gaps down in here. And with when you're working with something like this, you want to let inflate be your friend. So I am going to hit inflate and I'm going to hit topological. And I'm going to look at it from underneath so I can see where some of these gaps are. Ah, okay. I think I hit dynamic or something. Okay. What? Can I use Sculptor's Pro? Oh, Sculptor's Pro mode is on. I don't want it on. Let's see. Hold on. Why? Auto masking is activated. Maybe that's why. Okay. All right. There we go. I had uh, Sculptor's Pro mode on. I had to turn off topological in order to turn Sculptor's Pro off. Okay, so here we go. Um, so basically what I want to do is come down in here. Actually, I'm going to turn topological off so I can do several at once. And I'm just going to fill in all those gaps down in here near his head. And this is also good to do if you want to 3D print something. Because gaps are not your friend if you're 3D printing. So I'm just filling in all these gaps, just overlapping everything. Yeah, because retopologizing this stuff is a nightmare. A garden of hair. Welcome to the hair garden. So now I'm gonna go on the top and kind of reduce some of these just to add more variation. Because you can see the tips of these hairs, they don't just kind of go up and stop bluntly. They're a little bit uh, varied. So another thing I can do is grab the snake hook brush and just kind of pull the top, pull on the tops of some of these to add some variation. Turn on topological so I don't grab their neighbors. And that's what topological does. It just makes it so whatever color I grabbed first, it's not going to affect the neighbors, whatever I'm doing. Garden of hair is a new brush. Just insert, just insert this whole, pff, looks like coral. It's just this big coral. It's my new coral brush. Go get it. You'll never use it. <laughs> okay. Hey Stefano, how's it going? Don't grab your neighbors. Without permission. This is the permission button. Don't grab your neighbors without permission. Okay. You know what we can do now? I'm going to save it first because it might break. But you'll see that these, I, I hit all these with Sculptress Pro, so they have tons of triangles in them. I want to uh, Z remesh these so they're all quads again. So we're going to do that by going to Z remesh, not Tessimate. Z remesh. Uh, I'll try, yep, we'll try one and see what it does. Boom. Look at that. Garden. Colorful garden. <laughs> okay, now I need to do 
kind of an overall sculpts of this of these hairs i think <laughs> that's that's horrible jared it's horrible no that's not how it works in real life okay i'm gonna use inflate why isn't inflate working there we go so just kind of inflate along the bottom here Just, I just make, I want to make it so you can't really see the skin down in between here. Hmm. The garden that grows. Chia head. All right, do we dare? <laughs> All right. Now, I want to add some surface detail. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, I think I'm just gonna add some chaos with, with, the, with the clay buildup brush, we'll see. I'm gonna add a couple subdivision levels because I'm still not liking what they're looking like. Let's see. And I'm just gonna kinda try and go in there and add some curl. Not that heavy. Hmm. Get back so I can see what I'm doing. to add some curl to them but I don't know yeah that's true we can try that that's not a bad idea yeah I'm just kind of looking for some surface stuff just to break them up they look like rocks now so maybe, maybe a softer alpha, maybe just something like that. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Okay. Okay. This is what we're going to do. This is the only time I ever use a layer, you guys. Okay. I, I hardly ever use layers because they're prone to destruction. But when I'm doing experimentation stuff with surface noise, or anything like that, I'll add a layer. Okay, so now I can do some negative surface stuff. And just make them with, uh, I just wanted to kind of get it, just some kind of detail going on. And then grab this guy and just kind of blend that detail into the hair. So it makes sense. So that's part of that. I think my dog's trying to come in. All right. That's kind of that's kind of fun. That works. Maybe some I don't know what inflate's going to do to this. But so this is what you can do with a layer. This is kind of nice. Is you can turn down the detail, see that? You can even go negative with it. Go opposite. And that's that's not what I want it to look like. <laughs> So I do like what it was, but then I can turn it off. I can turn this layer off and then run inflate. Like I just want to inflate a few more of these. Okay, but I have topological on, I want to inflate them. 
just get them closer together. Because then if I retopologize this, that's looking like a cell or something. Okay. So now it won't inflate the noise that I just put on there. It'll just inflate the, the thing that I inflated. <laughs> so now what I can do is I can turn that noise back on and it'll just put it back on, which is nice. Okay. All right. I think I'm happy with that. But you can't have, you can't do anything to the underneath if your layer is showing. So if you ever want to do anything like that, you have to actually turn off that layer. And then, you know, you can come in here and like groom this a little more, inflate it a little more. Yeah, you could, I could totally make larger hairs, skinnier hairs. You know, this is during a stream. If I was doing it for a client or something, I'd probably spend more time making it look better. <laughs> but uh, I'm just trying to groom it. So I want them to kind of go crazy around the back, but not around the front. Maybe pull some of these out smaller. All right, me, Barry. Thanks for stopping by, man. I don't know why I'm using my mouse for this, but. I just want to have, I want this to have some gravity to it. I'm just kind of pulling it down. Trying to make it look less like a piece of coral. More like it has gravity somewhat. Okay, let's turn that noise back on. Fun. All right, let's get his shirt done. Okay. So to make a shirt, um, I'll do the same thing. I'll just duplicate this. I have one, and then I'll go down in, it doesn't look like he has any subdivision levels. Looks like a superhero with his mask on. <laughs> and then we will just grab, let's see, let's see what he's made of here. Okay, what I look for typically is like flow that's going around here, but he doesn't have any that is going in the right location. I'm gonna turn off uh, dynamic and just paint a mask where I want that shirt to be. Something like this. I don't want it to be on the bottom. I just want it to go slightly above that rim, that ridge. And then I'll pull it down by hand after I put it in place. And I want it to kind of go down in the front and high in the back. Something like that. Now I can just hit uh, Edge Loop Mask Border. And it'll put a border around my, my masked selection. Then I can hide everything but the shirt. Well, before I do that, I want to um, do Polish by Features, which will polish up that edge. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it's, something's going on with that mustache, but I don't... <laughs> this is just a duplicate, so I don't know what happened with that mustache underneath, but... Okay, so we have this piece. Now what we can do is just simply Z-remesh it at a low level. So maybe even a point 0.2 or something. Get Z remesh. Look at that. Butimus. Um, let's do it one more time. There we go. That's even better. You don't, really don't want it changing directions. You can come in here and smooth it out. All right, Oscar. Thanks for stopping by, man. Have a good one. I need to check out your streams, too.
I'm just trying to even out the surface for this. Okay. Now all we need to do is add some thickness. Um, oh, come on. Not what I wanted to do. Turn off Sculptors Pro. Where is my, there it is. Oh, that's why. Turn my, turned it back to gizmo. 3D. Okay. Basically, I just want to scale it up because I'm not going to add thickness to this yet. How many viewers? Um, we're, we're currently sitting at 209 across all platforms, which is awesome. Thanks for, thanks for spending your day with me, guys. I appreciate it. Guys and gals, whatever you want to, I call everybody guys, I apologize. Okay, so we have a shirt, t-shirt. And we can do, we can do a similar thing with, um, with the jacket. Okay, so what I can do now is I can just duplicate this off. And we have his jacket. And I wanna scale it up even more. Go down. Okay, let's see, scale it up. <laughs> Cool, Kaylin. Then what I want to do is I want to delete the, the geometry down the center to, to kind of open his jacket up. How you can do that is, is grab the select lasso and then hold down control plus shift and click on one of these lines and it will, it will hide it. It won't delete it, it'll just hide it. Okay, yep, or you can use inflate for sure, either way. Okay, and then I just hit uh, delete hidden. Now I want to I want to transform this top this top ring. What I can do is grab the Z modeler brush, hover over one of these edges, hit transpose edge loop partial, and click on that. And what that'll do is that'll mask everything off except for that one single line. And it looks like it might have grabbed something else. Maybe not. Okay. I'm gonna turn off symmetry and I can I wanna center it and then re reorient the orientation. Turn symmetry back on and then raise this collar up and bring it in. Okay, and then I want it kind of come forward like this. C trying to create creativity. <laughs> Crashes are not your friend. Okay, now I want, I want this portion of the collar to be closer. So again, turn off symmetry, hit this. It's not home, this, reset, scale it down. And then I can just smooth this into where that, I just move that collar. Just leave it masked. You kind of have a coat, jacket, whatever you want to call it. Um, and again, move elastic works really well if you want to make big movements on things. I just wanted his shoulders to be a little straighter, a little higher. even though his shoulders underneath aren't doing that. Doesn't matter. Uh, 
Uh, oh, elegant, elegant waster. Yes, uh, this user interface, and thank you very much, by the way. I appreciate it. Um, this user interface and my brushes are over on my website, which is 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Here, I'll show you really fast. Because I changed it. It's new. 3dcharacterworkshop.com. There's a, a six-minute video if you want to watch it. This is brand new. It's still a work in progress. I'm still working on it, but you can watch it. Um, but you can see right here, click here to grab Shane's free brushes for ZBrush. That comes with my user interface and my ruler and everything. It's the exact same thing. And if you click here, you just fill out your info and you get my brushes. Also, if you try to leave my website, a pop-up will come up and say, hey, do you want my brushes? <laughs> Annoying little pop-up. So there you go. Yeah, clothing. Um, one thing that I kind of borrowed from uh, my friend Dylan Ekrin, who works over at Disney Feature, he, he has been doing his clothing single-sided lately and just leaving it that way until after he poses it. So, and I, and I really like that idea. Um, that's kind of what he's been teaching his students. Um, I'm kind of a fan of it now, so... I'm just I'm just kind of wanting to leave it single-sided because you can you can add thickness at any time really And the only time you really want to add thickness there's two reasons The first reason is if you want to put any surface detail in your texture work inside of ZBrush So if you need the detail um, Then that's that's where you put it in you, you have to add subdivisions in order to put surface color in okay and then the second thing is uh now this now this is looking like a cape rather than a jacket um and the second reason is if you want to have surface detail like wrinkles like small wrinkles not you can still do large wrinkles with a single sided surface but small wrinkles or surface noise like leather detail or cloth texture or something like that then you would need to have the subdivision levels other than that i i tend to just kind of keep it single-sided for as long as i can okay this is another trick too if if you have some some kind of edges that are giving you grief there's a way to um just reduce the amount of edges in here you can just go to the z modeler brush and um go to insert just hold down alt on an edge and just click and you can delete it just delete every other one if you want to make it even less resolution I'll just leave that middle one and then you can do the same thing here delete why isn't it deleting there we go so now it's even even less and the reason I like to keep things so light like this is because it's easier to smooth, it's easier to control, and it's easier to keep the warbles out. <laughs> so warbles are your worst enemy. Um, right, Neil? I think Neil's the, the one, he made like this, this hamster looking dude with a shirt on, called him a warble. It's pretty funny. So... Let's see, I can uh, mirror and weld this. If you get off top all off, off symmetry, you can always, yep, got a case of the warbles. You need to get that looked at. <laughs> yeah, warbles, that just means lumps and bumps in your surface of your model. That's, I call them warbles. You don't want them. Trust me. So see how this, this line is pretty close to the center? You can also do a slide edge loop complete and just slide this away. It looks like when I did a mirror and weld, you can see that dark shadow in the center right there. That means there's more than one vertice. See that? And how to fix that, if you watch my past streams, it's really, really easy. Since I'm looking at his back, and mirror and weld always mirrors from, from uh, character left to character right, I know that I need to, to push these, this vertice, I need to take symmetry, turn it off, Move this vertice over onto the other side right here. Then do a mirror and weld again, and then it'll fix it right up. It's literally an infection that animals can get. <laughs> Perfect. 
the warbles. <laughs> oh, good. Well, thanks for looking that up. You can find anything on the internet. <laughs> oh, man. I'm glad it's an animal disease and not a human disease. Okay. There we go. Let's get this guy's eyes done, shall we? That's the only thing he's really missing, right? Okay, let's see. I'm trying to decide how I want to do these. Lately, I've just been doing a squish sphere, which works pretty well. I think I'm going to do that again. So all I do is I grab my insert multi-mesh brush. Um, is that what I want to do? Let me see. I'm in primitives. I, I kind of want one that has a pole. And I can't tell if these have poles. Nope. Hey, what's up, Chess Master? Uh, yes, I do share my layout. It's over on 3dcharacterworkshop.com. At the very top, there's a little bar. Just click on that and you can get it. Yep, and you'll get all, all the brushes down. I'm pointing at my screen like you can see it. But you'll get all these brushes down here, my user interface, and uh, my ruler file. Use the gizmo. Steven, thanks, dude. Use the gizmo. Okay, that means I need to duplicate this because it's going to replace it, right? I always forget it's in the gizmo. So, Sphere 3D. Ah, look at that. He looks like he's having issues. Okay, let me, let me solo this. Didn't you, didn't you remind me of that last time? H divide. I want to do like a, okay. Oh yeah, hemisphere, but it goes from this side back. Hmm, I'll just, I'll just make it full. Yeah, you might have. <laughs> oh man, too funny. Okay, 12 is good. Maybe 16? Yep, yeah, because I want to cross, I usually want a cross line and a vertical line. Horizontal and a vertical split by, okay, that's perfect. And then how many is this? Nine? Let's do 10. So I have one right down the middle. Oh, is Brendan here? Yay, Brendan! What's up, man? I was just talking about you earlier in my stream. That's right. I, I was showing him a picture of us. I'm just making, I'm just finishing this dude up, hopefully. Okay, let's go back to Gizmo 3D. Let's, uh, let's clip this down. Ah, I think I'm just going to scale it down. Oh, excuse me. Jeez. I know, right? Already. It's like already waiting for the next one. I will be at CTN if any of you guys are going. You ever go to that, Brendan? Have you ever been there? The Creative Talent Network in Burbank, California. Are you going to that, Stephen, this year? I know there's some weirdness happening with it, but I'm still going to go this year. Never been? It's pretty fun. Filled it with a material. Okay. Uh, yeah, there are some game things. It's getting more gameish, but yeah, it's mostly film. There's a lot of, a ton of artists there. A lot that I, I, I super respect and from like Disney Feature and DreamWorks and stuff like that. They're all there. Um, okay, with, with characters like this one, I usually like to fill it with toy plastic material. And I just fill the, the iris. That's it. So then you kind of get that going on. Kind of fun. I'm going to crease. 
and divide the shirt down. This looks like a cape. <laughs> oh, funny. Oh, thanks, Brandon. He's kind of staring up into the sky right now. But <laughs> thanks so much. I'm going to make his pupils just a little bit bigger and bring them down. It's fun. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we weirdness. I don't, yeah, I won't talk about the weirdness that's going on at CTN, but yeah, all you have to do is look up CTN, you can find it. <laughs> Just weirdness. All right, um, let's see. I want to crease this, uh, crease this line. So let's see. Hey, Ten Shiv, how's it going, man? It kind of looks like a priest, totally does. Ooh. Supposed to look like a cool guy. <laughs> but okay, let's uh oh Z modeler crease edge loop that. There we go. That I might I think I am gonna add some some thickness to this just to get it to straighten out. Um is that MC Hammer? Totally, MC Hammer. How do you, how could you guess? Group by normals, crease poly group. There we go. Bam, bam, there we go. Um, let's color his shirt like a light yellow. Make sure I'm off of, no. I'm off of material, fill it. Okay. Now you can see everything that I didn't fill. Come on. Fill. I'm having troubles with my colors today, kids. Fill. There we go. <laughs> Stop. Have a time. Fill. Okay. There we go. We're good. We're good, we're good. Let's pull this uh, this this jacket up though. The polygroup pink, yeah, that was pretty solid. I'm gonna make it kind of hanging open a little better. <laughs> Not so priest like. There we go. <laughs> Yay, copy paste. Thanks, man. Yeah, I did. Uh, Stephen reminded me of uh, the, the the spray. I always forget about that spray. You can just like go. Pfft. I stuck it on a layer and just kind of created some surface noise. But yeah, these are just kind of some tubers. Just like stretch spheres duplicated all over the place. Kind of fun. <laughs> Yay. Copy paste. All right. Um, kind of wish his neck was longer. Have you? Yeah, ever since I watched that Chris Costa when he's like using it really tightly in there. Oh my goodness, that guy. He's on a whole different level. And again, if you guys didn't watch that Chris Costa presentation at the Zebra Summit, after the stream, I suggest you go check it out. It's awesome. It's really, really good. He is, he's like hyper, hyper realism. That's what he loves to do. And it's fantastic. I, I had no idea how to do that kind of stuff with ZBrush, but he kind of show, shown some light on, on some of it, which is great. <laughs> A good five or seven times now. <laughs> The HD geometry is the thing to, to really watch that's great. So I've used some HD, HD that's kind of hard to say, HD geometry in the past, but I not, not at that level. And also just the way he keeps it um, manageable so it doesn't kill your machine. 
and uh, like it's pretty cool to see the faster your machine, the better it handles HD HD geometry. Holy cow! I cannot, I cannot uh, speak today. This dude said I'm not insane, and then proceeded. What? Oh, oh, you're talking about Chris Costa, how he's like, he's a dad and he works, yeah, six stuff, six hours a day and sleeps five hours a night, yep. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I want to add just a little bit more color to this guy. I, I don't like his coat being that brown. Let's fill that, that's better. Um, okay, I want to really quickly, uh, we got 10 minutes, let's do an expression on this guy, but before I do so, I'm going to save it. Save as, okay. Oh, thanks Moonmix. Okay, so really quickly, I hope I have, I didn't go through and name everything, I just hope everything has a unique name. I'm going to delete some of this stuff here. Delete. Just to clean it up before I give him a, a pose. Delete that hair helmet. The old eyebrows. Okay, okay. Now, I'm gonna take him into the T-pose mesh. Hopefully it works. And let's go lighter so I can see. Oh, looks like I flip. My jacket has flip normals, oh well, that's okay. Okay, let's see. Oh, need my mask lasso. There we go. I'm gonna switch over to the transpose tool for this one. Rotate his chin to the side. Just a little bit. I'm just looking for some asymmetry here. Sorry, I'm just kind of working fast. Maybe. I want, to turn, I want to tilt his head. Head tilts make all the difference in the world, guaranteed. All you have to do is tilt and turn a dude's head and all of a sudden he's posed. That's my secret, shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna tilt this. And turn his head a little bit more than the, maybe not that much. Go back to Gizmo 3D. Okay, and sometimes I don't care if I actually mess up his eyes, like, bring them out of sphere. Especially in a sculpt. I see how this eye is a little more droopy in the drawing than the other one. A little more closed. I know there's part of it is uh, perspective.
Okay, then I'll just go back to, uh, this is always fun. Pop, 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 watch him get streaked. <laughs> Ta-da! Need to fix his lip. His lip got a little warped. But, yep, if you want the links, you're gonna have to come to Twitch or Facebook. <laughs> Sorry, YouTubers. Make sure you turn off symmetry after you come back from being, from posing something. Okay. I want to give this guy a little bit of a smile, too. He's a friendly feller. There you go. Hey, Jared. Yeah, thanks, man. No problem. My pleasure. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me today. Make the side of his forehead kind of bigger. That's too fast. There we go. And once Red Dead Redemption comes out, I don't know if you'll ever see me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm really looking forward to that game. Okay, now just the last thing, I just want to make his eyes looking a direction, so. I'm going to make him kind of looking to his left. Oh, did I mask both? Okay. Looks like I masked both. Yeah, but uh, there, there's a lot of things, or uh, Mariah, whatever. What is it? Mir Yolo. Um, there's a lot of things that I want to change on him, but there's only so much I can do in a two hour stream. Let's see, this, this guy is going on four hours now. So this took me four hours to do. So if typically what I'll do is I'll take, I'll take him off stream and um, do, you know, like push him more towards the concept. But if you guys sat and watched me do that, you'd be bored out of your mind. So I take him as far as I can. And his neck, his neck could be a lot longer. Let's see if I can pull this down. But I, I appreciate the comments though. Okay, and this eyelid is making him have a different personality. So let's fix that. Yeah, there's, like I said, there's a lot of things that are, could be better <laughs> about him. better equip items I wish <laughs> it's crazy how just a little nudge a little movement can change his whole expression Yep, somebody just repeated it in the mix. I think you just said that same thing. Yep, one little nudge. 
Changes the whole thing. out oops pushed it too far now he's got a solid mustache <laughs> there we go Chin's a little longer. Neck needs to be longer. There's so much stuff. So much stuff. But for now, I'm going to wrap it up. It is what it is. <laughs> and for next week, um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, I might. I don't know if I'm going to do another head or something like that. Or if I'm going to start a big project again. Kind of like the cowboy dinosaur rider guy. Um, We'll have to say, we'll have to see. So I'll have to, I'll have to figure something out for next week. But uh, if you guys, did you guys see that cowboy rider? I'll show you. Oh yeah, I could do some Halloween stuff. Thanks for the, thanks for the idea. Yeah, man. So if you guys haven't seen, if you're brand new, this is the sculpt that I did a, a while back over the course of several, several streams. I might do a big project like this. I do one every year. I did the Pirate Girl the year before this guy this year. Um, and uh, ah, thanks so much. So, and this was printed out and shown at the ZBrush Summit this year. Let's see. I had it up, let me pull it up again. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy that uh, that it stood up on its on its own. We thought we thought we would absolutely need a wire going up through his feet right here, but luckily it didn't. Um, the it held itself up, and a big reason is because uh, smartest the guy who's in here talking right now that's Steven Anderson. He he keyed him. He put all the keys in and hollowed him out so he could balance himself. And it's also printed out of the gray pro resin that Form Labs has now. So um, yeah, this is a print and it's about, well, it's right here. <laughs> I can just show you. Uh, yeah, it's right here. Let me see if I can go full cam. Let's see if I, if I lose. Am I still talking? Okay, I still have audio. So yeah, you can see him. This is how big he is. He turned out really nice. Um, I, I, want, I keep holding onto his foot. I don't want him to, to, to dip forward, but yeah, this is, this is how he turned out. So let's see if I can get him in the, in the focus of the camera. Yep, turned out awesome. <laughs> Yay. And this is, the, this is the pirate girl that I did last year. So if you guys saw her. And, and uh, Steven Anderson also helped a lot with her too last year. So thank you, Steven. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, have a fantastic day, rest of your week. Um, looks like I have my logo happening down here. <laughs> you can kind of see it. Anyway, uh, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And I'll see you guys next Monday. I'll probably take... Uh, your advice and do a, a Halloween sculpt. Last year I did a Frankenstein. This year maybe I'll do something. Oh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I'll have to find something. Um, I have a I have a student challenge that's a Halloween challenge right now, and I'd love to show off their work when they're done with that. That's going to be wrapping up very soon, so I'll I'll show you guys a bunch of student work too. So anyway, thanks guys. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>